Hi, welcome to today's session from Impact Taxation and Financial Services. In this session, we're going to have a look at the big question, should you buy or rent your family home? Okay, before going to the main content of the presentation, uh, I just want to mention that the information provided here is for general information only. Before making any decisions, please contact an experienced tax agent, financial planner, solicitor, or one of our works planners. Okay, so what are the possible choices for your family home? So either renting or purchasing. But today, we're giving you a third choice, renting and purchasing at the same time. So why is that? Yeah, we'll go into more details a bit later. But basically, the main reason, when you think about it, when you're renting and purchasing by yourself, okay, there's no tax impact. But by renting and purchasing at the same time, potentially you might be able to have some tax benefits. Okay, but we'll have a look later. All right. So let's have a look at renting first. Uh, what are the pros? So there will be more flexibility to live in a desirable property at the right location. So uh, sometimes you might like a, a particular uh, suburb or uh, a property, but you can't afford uh, buying it, okay? But you can afford uh, to rent it, okay? And um, uh, also it's possible that uh, you don't have um, uh, enough saved up for, uh, for deposit, uh, okay? And then also by renting, you can free up savings for other investment because your money is not locked up in the uh, deposit to purchase your own house, okay? And then uh, you can potentially use the money to achieve some other short-term goals. For example, to buy a, a new car, okay? To um, go have a nice uh, travel, travel around the world, okay? Have a nice trip somewhere, um, okay? Uh, and then also uh, renting will allow you to diversify your investments instead of only investing on one single property. Yeah, you can potentially use the money to invest on share market, uh, to buy cryptocurrency, okay, instead of uh, locking uh, all your money in one single property, all right? And then also you can avoid uh, paying maintenance cost because the owners have, have to pay it, okay? And um, also you're not exposed to property market prices. So when the uh, market uh, crash, okay, goes up or goes down, you're not too worried, okay, because you're only renting. And uh, you're not exposed to interest rate rises, okay, because that's only uh, impacting on the owners uh, because of their big uh, mortgage, okay. But of course, uh, it could indirectly impact uh, you if you're renting, uh, because when the interest rate goes up, uh, the owner might want to increase the rental. Okay, so so uh, you might be impacted as well. So the cons about renting is um, they are, you're exposed to rental increase. Okay, it could be more expensive in the long run because um, most of the time, okay, when the property market's going up, the price is rising, the rental price will, will increase as well. And um, you don't really have a lot of control on that. Yeah, if the owner wants to increase it, you can change to another similar uh, property, but uh, the market is actually driving up the price. So you, it's out of your control. And then also um, it could be hard to keep paying the rental cost after retirement. So typically if you were buying a house by yourself, by the time you retire, you might already fully paid it. Then you basically can stay there rent free. But if you're renting all the time, then uh, after you retire, you don't have a fixed fixed income coming in. And then, but you still have to pay a lump sum for the rental cost. Then that's going to be quite hard, okay? And then um, also uh, there's no forced saving. So why there's forced saving? Because if you are buying a property by yourself, you have to pay a fixed mortgage repayment every month, right? So there's no choice. And then a portion of that is actually paying down the original housing price. Okay, so you, you're basically forced to pay down the, the house price, all right? And then that's why most people, by the time they retire, 
they already fully packed the property or majority of it. Okay, and then um, of course, uh, renting if um, is just uh, fully uh, related to residential, and you're not using part of it for business purpose or to generate taxable income. Then there's no tax savings, no tax impact yet because it's only uh, uh, private for private purposes. Okay. So that's for renting. Let's have a look at purchasing a property. So the pros is uh, stability and freedom. Okay, it, it will be stable. Yeah, because you're living in your own house. You know when you retire, okay, you're going to have your own property. And also you don't have to move around. Sometimes a tenant might have to uh, move out if the owner is selling the property. Um, so it's not very stable. And then also uh, when you have your own property, you have more freedom to make changes to it. You can do a big renovation, okay, change the whole kitchen. But if you are renting, you have to accept what's there, generally speaking, yeah, unless the owner agree, uh, you do some uh, renovation by yourself at your cost, <laughs> okay. But it's actually not to your benefit because, um, yeah, they can take it back uh, uh, for the property. All right, and then, um, so also uh, homes typically will increase in value, yeah. So, Say for uh, during the last 10 years, most properties uh, increased value. Okay, well, um, on average, probably doubled, yeah, for the for 10 years. Um, and then, so that's um, a, a big capital gain, yeah, if you're investing in the property market. And then uh, also, uh, potentially, of course, because of that, it uh, can potentially help you to build equity. Okay, so the cons for purchasing your own property will be you might not be able to afford to purchase a property you want to live. Okay, as the example we mentioned earlier, you want to live in a more expensive suburb. Yeah, but you can't, uh, you can't afford to buy the property, but you can rent it. Okay, and then um, you're also exposing to, exposed to interest rate increase. All right, if you have your own property, uh, you have to be committed to long-term mortgage repayment. And then you could miss other investment choices yeah, because your money is locked in. And then you're also exposed to house price fluctuation. So if the house price goes down, then you're losing, um, or sometimes uh, people can lose what you have paid initially, yeah, part of it, if the house market really, really crashes. Okay? And then um, add-on cost, uh, uh, as an owner, uh, when you purchase a property, you have to pay some duty. And then when you sell it, you have to pay um, commission to the uh, agent, and then you have to pay advertisement, uh, you know, similar expenses like that. And then also when you're holding the property, you have to pay insurance, council rates, uh, water rates, okay, uh, et cetera. And then, uh, so there are a lot of uh, add-on costs as an owner. And then, um, um, also, no tax savings. Yeah, if you're using the property uh, totally for private purposes, just for yourself or your family to live in, if you're using a part of it to generate taxable income, um, then you can potentially claim a uh, deduction yeah, for occupancy cost. Uh, but you also need to consider the impact on the future capital gains tax when you sell the property. Uh, for that portion that you did use to generate income and you have claimed tax deductions, okay? All right, so let's have a look at the third choice. Yeah, I want to highlight this choice, okay? So um, the major difference here is um, you can actually claim a tax deduction, yeah, from your investment property. So this choice, the, the, the main purpose, you, you actually rent a place, okay? You can rent a place you like, if you prefer to live in Bandai, okay, run run the place and you can afford the rental. You can rent there, okay, but you can you can buy a property uh, in some like other places. All right. And then um so basically for your investment property, you can claim all tax deductions, you know, on the expenses I mentioned earlier. Uh council rates, uh, strata, you know, um uh, water rates, okay. So uh, depreciation of the property. So depend on what type of property you are purchasing and uh, uh, which year it was built. So 
you can uh, potentially generate a tax loss from it. And then the tax loss can help you to reduce other income and reduce your overall tax. All right, so then uh, say for an example, if you're renting a place, you pay $800. You're also uh, having uh, investment property and you lease it out to a tenant and lease out for $800 per week, all right? Then for the $800 you, income you receive, you can use it to cover your rental income, rental uh, cost. But don't forget that that $800 you receive, you also can claim the other deductions yet to reduce your tax, all right? So that's an add-on benefit. Yeah, of course, um, in terms of your cash flow, you need to talk to a good uh, tax accountant to see, yeah, first of all, how much tax benefit you can generate, what's going to be the best uh, ownership structure. Yeah, we actually have other YouTube uh, videos to show you because you need to find an ideal ownership structure to uh, maximize your tax benefit. Okay, so and also, first of all, to find out whether there, there will be a tax benefit, because it's also depend on the uh, price you pay and the, the type of the property, how old it is. So there will be multiple factors you need to consider. But the whole concept here is that by um, renting yourself, okay, for private purposes, and then by purchasing a different property for investment, you can actually uh, benefit from the tax deductions. Yeah, for the investment property. And of course, here I also want to mention a concept yeah, from the um, tax purposes. We have debts uh, or loans, like we have uh, good debts and bad debts. Okay, good debts are the debts that you can claim tax deduction for the interest. Okay, and bad debts for tax purposes means you can't use the interest on the loan to claim a deduction, tax deduction. Okay, so when you think about it, when you borrow to buy an investment property, the tax purposes is actually a good debt, okay? Because you can um, utilize the interest deduction to reduce your, uh, your taxable income, all right? Okay, so then the bad debt, yeah, if you live in a um, owner-occupied property and you actually have loan, related to it, and then there's no uh, taxable income you're generating from that property, then of course, the whole loan balance or that debt is actually bad debt for tax purposes because there's no interest deduction. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. All right, so then uh, basically for the loan related to the investment property, you can actually claim the interest deduction for it. Okay, so then, of course, apart from the tax benefit, you have other add-on benefits too. Yeah, you can live in you know property you desire, but you can't afford to purchase. All right, and then you are not fully exposed to interest rate or rental increase because you actually have your one foot in uh, both areas. Okay, so you're standing in the middle. You know, you you are actually sharing both sides of the benefits and potentially risks as well. Okay. So then, um, so you're actually reducing your risk a little bit on both sides, okay? And then of course, um, when you are renting a place, this is actually, uh, could be beneficial for business people, okay? If you do run a small business from home, okay? When you are renting, you actually claim a deduction on a portion of the rental, depending on the area, okay? The, the, the portion of the rental, uh, you can claim a deduction yeah, from your business, okay? So then you don't need to worry about capital gain tax because you're just renting that property. But remember, if you are actually, uh, you, you do have a property under your name, then you are using it or part of it to generate taxable income. But that portion of the property, you do need to pay capital gains tax when you're selling the property, okay? So um, that's something you need to consider. And um, of course, uh, with this um, uh, direction, this method, you also potentially can have partial diversification of investment when you have some spare money left from property purchase. So 
uh, when that can happen is, um, let's say for an example, you might uh, want to live in Bandai, okay? And then maybe the rental there will be $1,200 a week, say for an example. And then um, you also, uh, you, if you purchase a property there, okay, you might need to pay two million, <laughs> three million dollars. All right, and then the uh, down payment at the beginning will be quite huge as well. But then uh, you can, you don't have to buy a property that's equivalent to the property you're renting. Okay, you can go to a different suburb and then buy a property maybe just $1 million or even an, an apartment as uh, maybe half a million. Okay, then, uh, so it depends on your capacity. Yeah, you don't have to buy something that you want to live in. Yeah, because you're renting out to somewhere else. So depending on your capacity, you can fully stretch your capacity at all. You can leave some um, spare capacity, okay, to invest on something else. So that actually gives you um, partial diversification, okay? You can, if you can afford to buy a $2 million property anyway, but you're not um, uh, choosing to buy, okay? Then for the spare capacity you, you, you have, spare money you have left, you can invest on something else. We do um, know um, some clients, um, they actually live in a really nice property, they're renting, okay, in a, a really nice area. And then even though they can afford something similar, to buy something similar, they actually buy multiple uh, properties, okay, in different suburbs, and then uh, rent them out. Um, so that basically diversified their risks as well, because instead of one huge property in one area, uh, they actually buy in, in different states, for example. And then that's uh, in a different way, they are actually reducing their risk. Okay, risks, even though they're all, all the investment are on property market, but they're actually at different location, different states, different cities, then um, the risks actually are reduced as, as well. Okay, and then, um, of course, with the whole concept, um, you do need to talk to a good tax accountant. Yeah, uh, talk to us or find a good tax accountant to help you with the analysis to see whether it's feasible, okay, how much tax you can really save um, then before you make the final decision, okay. So the, with, with this method, uh, the disadvantages are you still need to save up for initial deposit for the investment property. But here, a little bit, or, or actually a big fle flexibility you do have is you can pretty much choose or decide how much you want to save up, okay? So depend on what type of property you want to buy, okay? You can start from buying uh, a small apartment, studio apartment, okay, to, to buy. And then slowly, as you have more capacity, you can, change um, to like a bigger uh, property to invest. So you do have more uh, flexibilities here. And then, um, so one of the cons is you, for that property you, you, you do purchase, you are still locked in long-term mortgage, right? So you still need to be careful, you know, what property you, you, you purchase. And then um, you're partially exposed to risks from both sides, okay, still. So because, if you're renting somewhere really expensive, okay, you're still, uh, and then you're buying something really cheap or really, uh, or not too expensive, then if you want to maintain the same uh, lifestyle, say for, for example, after you retire, you still want to live in a property or renting for $1,200 per week, that might be hard, okay? So slowly you want to use like this method, but slowly build up to utilize all your rental properties to support your uh, lifestyle towards retirement. Yeah, so that's the, the idea. Um, all right, and then, uh, so if you need more details here, yeah, because a couple of things we mentioned, especially here, how to maximize your tax benefit, you, you do need to choose the best uh, ownership structure. You, you also need to avoid some common, commonly made mistakes. All right, so in, um, our YouTube channel, yeah, there are multiple rental property related uh, sessions yeah, we have recorded before. So you can actually watch them one by one. 
and uh, let us know if you have any questions. All right, and then that's the end of the uh, session, basically. So here is a brief introduction about myself. You can pause the video to have a look, and uh, our contact details are here. So if you have any questions, um, you want to get us to help you with any analysis, give us a call, drop us an email. Uh, we're here anytime to help you. Uh, so thank you for attending the, this online session.